The information technology, or IT for short, is a very high paying career field. With the rate that technology changes and advances today, you can be assured that computers aren't going anywhere anytime soon, and neither are the people who build or work on them. However, IT is perceived as a difficult field to get a start in because of the very common belief that you can't get into the IT field without IT experience, but you can't get IT experience without being in the IT field, so it's viewed as a catch-22. I want to help you understand what steps you need to take and repeat in order to get your first IT job or even subsequent IT jobs. Now we're going to break this down into five steps. First, number one is get experience. Number two is prepare a resume. Number three is apply to hundreds of jobs each week. Number four is prepare for the interview. And number five is negotiate the salary. Obviously this looks simple when written down, but it is much harder to actually accomplish. If you follow these steps and continue to repeat steps one through five, you will eventually land a great IT job. Now let's cover these steps in a little bit more detail. First, getting experience. Now if you do not have a resume or any experience, then don't think about any of the other steps until you have this one down first. What I want you to do is every time you use a new technology, I want you to write it down in one form or another. Note the name of the technology, the version, and exactly what you did with it. This will come in handy for the next step when you actually go about preparing your resume. If you get a chance to work with Windows Server 2016, Group Policy, Active Directory, or any other IT related technology, I want you to write it down so you can later add it to your resume. Make sure that your notes are detailed enough that if you come back in five months and an interviewer asks you about that particular experience, you are able to spend about two or three minutes talking about what you did with that particular technology. Now let's talk about preparing your resume. A resume is an organized document that lists your skills and abilities. This document lists all the experience you have gained, whether it's on your own time or on the job like we've talked about before. I'm saying it again, make sure you document all your experience whether you gained it at home or on the job. The type of employer that you want to work for is the kind that's only concerned with what skills you can bring to the table right now and how you can benefit their company or their project or whatever they want you to work on. Once you have a resume that you feel is good, I want you to start sending it around to your friends, your family, coworkers if you have any, get everyone to look at it that you possibly can. Now what this does, it'll allow them to find typos, errors in your resume. A lot of people are going to have suggestions, you don't have to take them. You definitely want to take advice from someone who knows what they're talking about. So someone who works in the IT field, maybe a recruiter, uh, anyone who knows about resume writing, you know, you can take advice from people who are you know, English majors for example, someone who knows how to write. If you visit my website, itflea.com com forward slash resources forward slash WSA you can find an example resume for download and the password to that page is W S A I T F L E E okay and that's for all my students who are enrolled in this course uh, you can just log into that you can download the resume any other resources for this course I will put on that page I also have a coaching service where I will look over your resume and help you figure out how you can make it better to give you a better chance of getting an IT job the next thing we're going to talk about is applying to jobs now if you're unemployed your job is actually to find a job so you're never really out of the job okay don't feel like just because you don't have a job doesn't mean you have to work when the exact opposite is true you're going to have to work very hard in order to get a job that will pay you each month. So right now, that's your job, to go out and find a job. What I recommend is that you apply to at least 10 to 15 jobs every single day. Now, if you've already applied to all the jobs that are in your area, then you probably need to consider relocating or widening your job search. I like to use the following job sites for job hunting in America, although they may also apply to other countries as well. Indeed.com, Monster.com, CareerBuilder.com, ClearanceJobs.com if you have a U.S. clearance, ZipRecruiter.com, and Snagajob.com. Now a quick search on Google will turn up countless sites like these, all specializing in helping you find a job. Register and create a profile on all of them. I also strongly recommend that you create a profile on LinkedIn and that you join several IT related groups. Connect with a ton of recruiters and message them telling them about yourself and that you're in the job market. Now if you've done all of this and you're still not able to get an interview, then it's time to look at two things. Number one, volume, and number two, quality. We look at volume because I want to know how many jobs per week you're applying to. Then we'll look at quality because I want to know how your resume looks. It is possible that you're either not applying to enough jobs or you don't have enough skills on your resume. If this continues to go on and you know that you're applying to enough jobs, it's time to go back to step one and get more experience. Let's talk about preparing yourself for the job interview. 
Now, a job interview is nothing more than a sale. You're going to have to sell yourself to your potential employer. This means that you must have your sales pitch down and well practiced. Go over each line on your resume and be prepared to talk about each line for a couple of minutes. For example, if you list Active Directory on your resume, then you need to be able to talk about what you've done within Active Directory other than simply stating what is on your resume. I had this one interview where the interviewer went line by line over my resume from the top all the way to the bottom. I mean, he covered every single line and all he said for each line was, tell me about this line. He didn't comment on anything I said. That's all he said was just tell me about this line. Now the bad news for me was that I hadn't prepared or memorized a story for each line, so I was at a loss for words. Now, let me tell you, this was awkward for me, it was awkward for him. Just don't let this happen to you. Make sure you memorize each line and a story for each line on your resume. Now let's talk about negotiating a salary. When you've done a good job on your interview, you're gonna have recruiters coming back to talk to you. Now more than likely they're going to ask you how much you make a year or how much an hour you are paid. Now what you want to do is turn this back on them and get a range from them. So what's the salary range or what's the hourly range for this position? Believe me when I say that every position has a budget. Okay, and you just want to find out what the budget is. What's the high end of the budget? What's the low end of the budget? Now, recruiters don't really like talking about this because most of the time they want to hire you as cheap as possible. And they know that they have a better chance of a hiring manager approving you if they offer you less than what you're worth. Always do your best to get them to talk numbers first. Now, sometimes if they're really adamant, they're not going to do it. You're just going to have to tell them what you want, tell them what you're currently making, and just be honest with them. Make sure you don't lie about your salary and say you make more than you do, as this gives them the reason to fire you later on down the road. And believe me, whatever you tell them is verifiable. The best companies will simply tell you how much the position pays and they will ask if that's what you're looking for. Here's my general rule of thumb. If you know that you'll be happy to make 80,000 annually, tell them you're looking for the 90 to 100,000 range, but you're willing to negotiate. Now let's just say that they are telling you the position pays 75 to 85,000. What you can do is just tell them that you've been looking for 90 to 100 and that'll make them put you on the higher end of the salary range for the position because they know you're looking for more. All right, it betters your chances of getting better pay. Now of course, you don't want to be too outrageous so you can kill your chances of getting a job, but you also don't want to shortchange yourself. The last thing that I want to tell you is that remember you have to keep trying even if several potential jobs fall through. And I'm telling you right now that it's going to happen. Job searching is one of the hardest things to do because you're going to have job after job. You're going to get so excited for it. It's going to sound like it's going to work out and then it's just going to fall through. Okay. It happens all the time. This is normal. You just got to keep going. So don't expect to get a new job within two weeks of searching. You're going to have to be persistent and you're going to have to work hard in order to get that dream job you've always wanted. But in the end, I promise it will pay off. All right, that's it for this lecture. I hope these tips help you guys, and I will see you in the next lecture.